<laughs> I don't think these guys have ever sat together ever f together in a TV interview like they're doing right now. Prove it. See what any prosper. This is the problem of having people, four journalists, and it's just messy. Boniface Mwangi running for MP in Stereh, eh? And Miss Edith Kimani, who um, I taught everything she knows. <laughs> it is true. I'm um, international news anchor, DW News. I was just hanging out with her in, in Berlin like we three seconds were. ago. I it owe you a trip now. You owe me a trip indeed. Yeah. The very lovely, never had a bad hair day, no pimples, no wrinkles. <laughs> Janet Mbugua. I'll take it. Thank journalist, you. many other things. Yeah. And Shafi Weru, finally. It was about damn time, dude. Man, yo. Ujama. I didn't want you to leave before I came and said, you know. <laughs> you know hey, this guy, yeah. I've been asked, trying to get him to come on the show for literally four and a half years. Wow. And he was just like, he was just feeling just sweet for me. He was waiting. No, we're supposed to shoot the show, uh, the show in Italy. Saving the best in for Italy. Last. No, we, we're supposed we were... to do the show in Italy. <laughs> and then he left his cameraman behind. So here's the thing. So Shafi and I were in Italy together in Milan. And then the blogs were like, oh, Shafi has turned Larry into a drunkard. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, where did that even come from? I know. <laughs> of course, that is a natural progression. It's a natural progression. You hang out with Shafi, you become a drunkard. Like, seriously, who made <laughs> And it was not his fault. Yes. He did nothing. And I still don't agree. I don't agree. hear him defending himself. Yeah. Though, you know? He's just like, yeah, man. No, I don't want that story to continue because he, <laughs> when Larry tries to, like, explain exactly what happened. It, it just becomes worse if yeah. I try to explain it. <laughs> this guy just did something epic. Did you break a world record yesterday? Yes, yes, yes. Um, not to uh, be confirmed in five days. We're waiting for the official confirmation. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but uh, we set out How much to... did you drink? We set out... No, 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 no. <laughs> no I, I, already, drink I already record. broke that. I already broke that. I'm still the reverend. No one in Kenya has uh, parted for 48 hours. Uh, 48 parties in 48 hours. My nature, like, wow. do it. I've done it uh, twice in a row. Yes, Why? 48 parties in 48 yeah, hours. That's, that's I'm still the only question. person holding the title. <laughs> yes, but that's not the issue. Yeah, what you broke is a different record. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh -huh. I, uh, I broke uh, the New York Pro uh, with Gillette uh, World Record, actually, technically. Mm -hmm. Yes, because um, uh, the previous record was held by Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, where 2,300 and about 770 uh, people uh, broke the world record uh, three years, uh, two years ago. World record of? Of uh, shaving. Most, men, uh, most people shaving at one place or one ah. location at the ah. same time. Synchronized shaving. Yes. Synchronized shaving, because yes. this is a thing now. So yeah, my, yeah. my, my beard was becoming a thing. Imesumbuwa Nairobi sana, Kenya sana. <laughs> so, you know, we decided, you know, let's do something about it. Yeah, so um, we know the World Athletics uh, Championship is happening in, uh, in the London 254. Next month. No, no, there's uh, uh, under 18. Oh yes, the, the under 18, 18 is, going on, yes. is, is going down at Kasarani. So I'm to do something bigger than that. Just like uh, you said, know, with preamble. All the, said with all the humility he could master. Yeah, so the preamble. <laughs> yeah, so I decided to like you know gather together um, the most uh, people together. And eventually, how many people did you have? Three thousand. Yes, we got three thousand. Three thousand people shaving yeah. in one. Close, piece. close to three thousand. Wow. We passed the two thousand three hundred. Let's, let's, let's round it off. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. So we're waiting, we're waiting for the certificate, and now that Larry is not here, no. so. Who will be here? Because I have to be back it on the show. Itako, so I panic. Yes. <laughs> big shout out, listen, big shout out to all the people who came through. Big shout out to Gillette. Uh, big shout out to uh, KU because we needed a ground where we could be able to do this, um, uh, manage the challenge. Okay. And we went down and yo, I actually did shave. You still kept. It's hard to though. tell, but yeah, we'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> still kept your beard. Oh, oh. He kept his beard. <laughs> well, oh, man. Well, oh, the people who see me close and personal one, I draw. Wow. <laughs> wow. Anyway, uh, come on, Janet, please. Really? Just... <laughs> 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 please, please. Well, yeah. I think we need to tell <laughs> This conversation is going downhill. That conversation <laughs> went south. <laughs> Janet, where did you disappear to? Where did you leave TV? Do you know how heartbroken we all are? No, I think everyone's fine. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> we're just... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm not watching news no more. No. <laughs> Look, I had to, I think I had to get out to get better. I just felt like I was heading for burnout. Mm -hmm. um, I've done TV for 10 years. I, I'm not done with it. I think I'm one of those people who feels like I'll do it till I'm 90. Mm -hmm. But in terms of live TV, news, I just needed a moment. And it's been great because I had a lot of projects that were kind of pending and yeah. in limbo, so I've been able to pursue those. I'm just really enjoying myself right now, you know. I'm finding myself. It's a season of transition. Mm -hmm. I'm just... Yeah, I'm at peace. I think I'm, there's a lot I'm doing in terms of Help a Child Reach Five with Life Boy. I am Motherhood, my portrait series. Um, and all of these are kind of growing their own tentacles. So I'm just really enjoying myself. A lot of MC and moderating. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's other things I'm working on, but I'm one of those people who's scared to say them 
in case I jinx it. You don't it. want to jinx it. I don't want to jinx it. So there's a lot on my plate. Will I go back to TV? I never say never. Mm -hmm. um, I left on really good terms with my mm -hmm. former employees. They were fantastic to me. But I was heading for burnout. I could feel it. I could see I was going to crack. You know, the yeah. interesting thing about this is those of us that work in this, there's a certain drug to it. Yes. And stepping away, you almost feel like um, you're losing yourself. Yep. Can I do it? Will I survive without being on TV? But that's why you go and leave. <laughs> <laughs> but going on leave it for a week Damn or two. It. It's for a yeah. week or two. He's right. <laughs> Shafi. <laughs> it's more serious than that. It's, 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 um, it's, <laughs> it's true what you're saying about stepping away. And, mm -hmm. and that's the thing. I think everyone feels like they know what's best for you. And people mean well. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people were like, how could you leave? What yeah. were you thinking? Yeah. But I'm the only one who knew what I was, what's shifting in me. Right. And as long as my support system is good with me, my husband, my parents, my, mm -hmm. you know, my mom-in-law, my sisters, -in -law, my support system, um, then I'm good. Shafi. It took about six months. <laughs> <laughs> Shafi, take credit for your support system. <laughs> I know. It took a few months. Yeah. I didn't just wake up. Uh -huh. But um, I'm, I'm happy. I have no regrets. I'm just really enjoying this season right now. I'm enjoying just doing everything that I've always wanted to do. I respect that. Yeah. And Edith, you disappeared from Kenyan TV. Where did you go? First of all, I'm wondering what I'm doing on this panel because these you guys here? are doing such amazing things. People are breaking world records, <laughs> making personal projects, running, running for, for office. office. <laughs> I'm like, I just woke up this morning. <laughs> You're on the international stage. You're international TV, oh, child. Don't, don't underrate sunshine. yourself. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I left KTN and I joined Deutsche Welle first mm -hmm. as the East African correspondent. And then shortly after that, I was offered a position to be a news anchor in Berlin. Now, as you can imagine, having worked in a different country before, mm -hmm. It's very overwhelming. Um, and it took me a year to make that decision, to make that choice. And eventually I did move. And I have to tell you, Larry, it was one of the most difficult months of my life. Uh, because it's everything. It's an avalanche. Mm -hmm. it, I went when it was freezing. You know, Berlin is I was looking at your, sna your snaps yeah. on Instagram. <laughs> and you're like a, an African child in Europe in the middle of winter. <laughs> yeah. There's also the second issue of, you know, ich spreche kein Deutsch. Uh, I didn't speak uh. German at the time. Still don't speak German. English nicht. <laughs> <laughs> English nicht. Yeah. Um, and just being surrounded by a culture that's completely different from yours. And I was very comfortable at KTN and moving someplace where I was just plunged into, I like to think about it as a small fish plunged into an ocean. Mm -hmm. But I really don't have a choice. I have to swim my way through these waves and see what happens at the end of the As someone the who wave. has watched you up close, I think you're doing fine. You're underrating, um, Janet will agree, how well you're doing <laughs> and how well you're acclimatizing and holding your own in this huge international stage. And I'm just really proud. Thank you, Larry. And I have done. to say that, you know, Larry is not joking when he says that he's taught me everything I know. We used not to true. sit, I don't know if you can remember Janet in the KTN newsroom, but I ended up in the bathroom. Yeah, the bathrooms. Oh my gosh, with my hair. He just used to make us look he really bad. was. Come yeah. on. And he somehow <laughs> pulled me into his clique. You were really not the cool guys. I don't know how I ended up. I, we were the cool kids, child. <laughs> no. yeah. And he was teaching me how to write and he was trying to come up with this new concept mm. and everyone was shutting him down. But he's like, you know what? Just keep pushing, keep pushing. Mm. And we were having this conversation at the World Economic Forum, weren't mm -hmm. we? Look yes, we were. Absolutely. Moderating global Moderating forums. global events, the World Economic <laughs> Forum and stuff. And I'm like, why am I here? I'm just happy to be here. Yeah. If you don't give me anything, I'm fine. Yeah, detail. So, honestly, from that little corner of the KTN newsroom to what you're doing now. To what we are ups. all doing. What we're all yeah. doing. Okay. We used to work together at KTN as well. Yeah, back that's in the what day. I'm saying. I remember Janet you just being the person. No. Janet was such a snob, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Janet was such so a snob. <laughs> We used Just to work like, with him at the standard group as well. Yes, I remember, yeah. He was like a Mr. Hotshot photographer, yeah. won 73 awards. Paparazzi. Paparazzi. Yeah. No, well. that, that's before they were employed. He <laughs> <laughs> was a paparazzi many years ago. Before the... He was a paparazzi for Pulse, then he's like, no, I'm better than this. I'm going to do go and so change the world. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you, the day he decided to go change the world, I was the happiest man alive. <laughs> Why? Because now he was off hey. your back. Uh, uh, Boni, uh, show me how he's like... Let me, tell you, let me tell you how bad. Let me Why didn't this make it to your book, though? All those X files. Let me tell you how bad it is. It's eh? now. Let me, tell you how, <laughs> let me tell you how bad it is. Eh? Boni gets bored. He sends me photos. <laughs> I'm like, boss. Just, just yeah. sliding them in. I'm like, who created the WhatsApp? I'm like, shut this guy down. I'm going to find Riz. So it's a good motivation. Just random, just random photos. As, uh, 1989. <laughs> 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 like nameless and you're who. Uh, yeah. That's him about it. Yes. Like, I was born as a like nameless. And I can do. And guess what? Picture, guess no? what he did? Eh? Joking. One day, eh. he sends this picture to because you know he does it so randomly. Yeah. He sends it to the wrong group. Oi. And then he calls me your boss. <laughs> 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 I'm like, yo. <laughs> 
money by the Is this a real story? This is a true story. No, this is Nicholas Mann. I was chatting with him and then I sent him a photo, but I sent the wrong group. Oh. But lucky for him, he was more skinny. And more no, drunk. I mean, you can't, and I didn't have, I didn't have, I didn't have, you didn't have the tattoo. Yes. So, yes. so yeah. you can't delete him. But how oh. are you doing, Hey, Rari. Hey, 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 hey. You're political, Rari. Demo, I got you. Hey, Jira. Hey, hey, hey. You are running for office. Why are you running for office? Kenyan politics is messed up. Tell the country you have a plan. In five years running for president, I'll be a deputy or the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> I would never work. That ticket is going nowhere. Uh, no, on a, on a serious note, I got tired of protesting and going to outside parliament to present a petition. And when I do that, it's thrown in the dustbin. So I want to go to parliament as the voice of the people, of the voice of us inside parliament and to work for the people. Everybody who has ever gone into parliament with an activist background gets swallowed in and they forget what they used to stand for once. So I'm not everybody to start with. I have a track record of what I've been able to do. I've been beaten and arrested fighting for Kenyans. I have two things that I fear a lot. Uh, I fear my mother, who loved me and brought me up. And if I did that, I'd be betraying the values that she taught me. Then I fear God. Me, I've, I've lived in very hellish moments, and I want to go to heaven. So let me tell you, the, the person who's going to check on me, on my values, is actually God and the values that my mother taught me. Because at the end of the day, I can betray human beings. But I think I'll be betraying my core if I betrayed my mother and my God. So it's not that, that I'm a very good person, but God keeps me in check. So I'll be true. I am a father of three young kids who I love a lot, who I want them to grow up in a better country, and then to walk in roads that are paved very well, they're well lit, and they're safe, and they go to public schools, and they get, when they go there, they, they, they're teachers in class, they go to public hospitals, they're doctors. Right. As in, I have this ideal country in my mind. And as a very young person, I'm only 33 years old, when you're younger, you're supposed to be idealistic and fight for what you believe in and do what you love. And it's good to fail when you do what you love than trying to live people's life. So I know people say no, they've been disappointed before by activists, but let me tell you the truth. When I go to parliament, I'm going to change public perception on how leaders should behave. I'm going to be true, and I'm looking at you in there. You have known me for long? No. I've known you for um, almost no. 10 years now. Yes, so I'm not, you know me, as in you know me outside this. And you know very well, I haven't changed, have I changed? The nope. girls who know me. So I'm not going to change. And I think power doesn't change you, it reveals who you really are. And I'm not going to parliament for power, I'm going to parliament to work. Right. This guy has just punchlines, punchlines. Everything is a one liner that you can, is a tweetable thing. I was looking for a notebook. Mm. You're like, hey, what, what <laughs> are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I must ask Shafi though. Your, um, why are you so controversial on radio? Like, why are you such a controversial person generally? There are comes we, the are question. Are we, are we really gonna go yes, there? we're going to go there. Mm. No, I'm not controversial on uh, radio. I'm just... I'm, <laughs> I'm not controversial on radio. I'm just that guy who, you know, just... I'm a realist, as in I say what I want to say when I say. And when it comes out, it comes out. I don't like, you know, mince my words. I'm like an activist on radio. They say, you know, like, people are confused uh, what Boni does to, like, you know, being a, a hooliganism. It's just that I have a microphone. I talk to people every morning. Before that, I was talking to people every afternoon for the longest time. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, uh, yo, it's a calling. And, I, like, the, the whole time we were sitting, Janet just wanted to take off. Mm -hmm. Because of the things that kept on coming out of my mouth. And uh, if uh, you didn't like, know me, your mouth, yeah, child, if you, if, you child. Me, if you didn't know me, you'd think uh, either I'm pretending or I'm trying to, like, you know, uh, you know, get attention. But it's not that, man. I, if I see something or if I want to voice my opinion, I'll voice it the best way I know how. Do you worry that, though, your lifestyle and what you say, that young, lots of young people that look up to you and they'll be like, ay, apana. No, no, no. Uh, no, listen, you know, the young people, the millennials, eh, they, they, they ask questions. They, they see through BS, and uh, I'm happy to be the generation that, you know, inspired that. Eh? We grew up just believing what we see and what we hear, not questioning it. But uh, as we stand right now, the reason as to why um, the political scene uh, is a two-horse, uh, they call it the two-horse? They call it the two-horse race, The yes. two-horse race, mm -hmm. and the rest are donkeys, is the fact that 51% uh, are youth, and the youth already don't care. So it's complicating the maths. So for the people who are going to vote, uh, uh, for the people who want to be voted, the, the, uh, whether you're Jubilee or whether you're NASA, you're sitting there, you're wondering. So you need 51 plus, right? 
Yes. And the 51% is youth. And there's uh, voter apathy. Eh? This youth, how am I going to get them? Right. Because they've already made it, uh, as in, they, they have decided in their head, we'd rather vote in a bigger thief yeah. than yeah. the thief who was there before. You know, those are the kind of things that uh, we've, I've inspired eh, in the course of my, you know, my tenure on radio. But I, I ain't going nowhere. I'm still here, man. Mm -hmm. so you're a father, man. You're I'm a, a, you're I'm a grown a father, man. man. I'm, a father, I'm a father of two, man. My daughter, uh, Milan, is uh, 12. She turned wow. 12 in June. Wow. Nia, Nia, Nia will be doing the trend in 2020. Let her come on. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Listen, I w all of people look up to all of you guys for different reasons. Janet, you've been in this scene. I, t I said earlier um, on the show that this generation glorifies instant gratification and yeah. fame and popularity more than anything else. People don't want to put in the work. They just want, they want what you have now, Janet, yeah. not knowing how long you've taken yeah. to get here. That's one of the saddest things. And I talk to a lot of young people. I love the passion that young people in this country have. I always have. Um, today I was interacting with hundreds of them at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. the we, global we, 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 we were. Yo. Okay, Shafi. Yo, <laughs> we, we were. I promise I'll come on your show. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, I promise. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the global CEO for Unilever was there giving mm -hmm. a talk. And you can tell they, they, want, they want everything now. There's a passion there, but there's a misconception about success. So yes, we're in the microwave generation, as it's called. I don't understand that. I've worked hard for everything that I've ever gotten, and I'm not afraid to say it. I love that getting into KTN and going to South Africa, going to Citizen, uh, the ambassadorship with mm -hmm. Lifeboy, um, what I'm doing with Resolution, the, the gigs that I'm getting, the other ones that I've been approached for, that's all me, and it's all work, and there's no shortcut. And that's what people don't really seem to get, and that breaks my heart. So I normally tell, t tell them, so they'll say, I want to be an anchor. I'm like, let's... Take it back. Do you even understand what that entails now? Mm -hmm. It's different. It's, it's completely different. You don't just wake up. It's live. You know, it's... You're people the people don't want even to be a reporter because it's not glamorous enough. They want to sh yes. show up day one yes. this and be an anchor no. because... And actually, yes. mm -hmm. there's a funny trick. Some yeah. children that don't become a doctor so they can actually be on a grace anatomy. Oh my gosh! Oh. No. <laughs> no. Oh. no, but no. it's, it's that kind it's, of ignorance. Look at not actress, yeah. the doctor. No, it's it's, 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 it's really sad. Like, mm. so I don't know. I don't know what's going to the more because the more I talk to them, sometimes they begin to get it, and I think you realize that if you're on this kind of platform, the best you can do is engage as many of them right. to try and make them understand. You can't okay. reach everyone. I love doing it through social media as well. I love just sort of sharing what I do and talking to them on, on DM or whatever it is. But that's the best we can do, is just to make them understand that not, there's just really no shortcut. And it's so much more gratifying. It really is, as opposed to when you're an overnight sensation yeah. tomorrow. When you've worked so hard for it, you know where you That's why it was easy for me to step out, because I was like, I've honed my skills. I know I'm still learning. I still right. want to grow and be better. Mm. But I've honed my skills enough to say, let me step out and even try and get better so when I go back, there's longevity to it, there's more, more substance. Yeah. And so I'm so happy that I have that kind of background, that it, I can't be shaken um, by things that are instant, by shaken by, I, I love what you said earlier about the fact that, you know, just focus on your hustle, work hard on it, stop listening to the noise. Forget I'm a believer yeah. in that. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a good space. Right now I'm in a space where there's really not much you can say to shake me or break me, mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a, it's a space of self-discovery and finally, just agreeing and knowing, I'm good at this, so let yeah. me just hone it and let me own it. So, yeah. All right, Edith, you, you, you came through the presenter, it was a competition to find a presenter, and you won that. Though it's more like the presenters, there was more yeah. than one winner. I was the ultimate. And it. And it. No, actually, the survivor. You were the survivor, yes, I survivor. guess we could say that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, apart from Linda, Linda Nyongwasu, who I work with. Yes. I, I, Come on, uh, Cindy Ogan is on the Cindy show. Cindy was on the yeah. show. Yeah. And I'm Cindy, judge. Yes, Cindy. and you were a judge. Uh, she she auditioned was was me. Me. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. Give us a winner. No, I, I knew she they was the They gave us winner. winners. The moment <clears throat> she came for the audition, and that's the craziest thing, the yeah. moment she came in, I whispered to my co-judges, I think it was, there was two people. Uh -huh. I think it was Michael O'Year. Yeah, it was Michael I think, and Jackie Tom. Yes. And I said, I think she's going to win this. Yeah. I remember saying that to them and they all agreed so yeah anyway look at that so that's a journey I mean, right but the people perhaps don't even realize that i don't know how many people watch the show who know you won a competition to be on tv yeah it's absolutely surreal every single time i tell people that at my office they're like what you're joking right because it's just such an absurd way yeah. such a crazy launching pad but that those are the cards i was dealt mm -hmm. right I came into the competition wanting to pass time because I needed to get into uni at some point. And then in the course of 
that one year I got a job and I was like, oh gosh, I guess I really now have to learn how to be a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I've grown to love it. And you know, earlier I was saying that it was a very difficult transition, but make no mistakes. I really love my job, Larry. I, I really do. Sometimes I feel bad saying it and Modoni was like, why? You should love it and really own that. It has grown me, it has challenged me, it's still moving and growing me in ways that I didn't realize before. The kinds of conversations you and I have, Larry, mm -hmm. it's not because, you know, we woke up one day, snapped our fingers and we're where mm -hmm. we're at. It takes a lot of study. You study to be a journalist, yeah. you have to listen yeah. to the right yeah. people, you need mentors, you need constant practice and you need to really be able to take no. Because a lot of people will come we'll at you. This is no, important. Yeah. No, you're not. The hardest enough. thing, the hardest no, thing, not, yeah. the hardest thing is when you're thrown to the like in the deep end. The deep end yeah. Like what she did mm -hmm. is the same thing that happened to me. Bonnie can attest. I was struggling. Like that's when pass was starting. Like when the, the entertainment scene was just blowing up. They only had one shafi to be put in the paper every Friday. <laughs> every Friday. <laughs> Yeah. If I was not in the papers, you know, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. I've been judged, like, the, man. There's no truth of Facebook. I was judged so many times, man, like. I think we all have. But, it, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah. uh, my point is, yeah, uh, as you say, every, uh, every success story has a journey. As in, there's where you started, and the start is always hard. Okay. And if you're one of the people like um, uh, Edith. Edith or I, where you ended up, like, in a radio station, and then you got that cool job, you just didn't get the cool job. You got the cool job and you had to put in the work. Yeah. Because True. Half, some people get the job and then you just get fired. And if I wanted the cool job, I'd go to Big Brother. <laughs> and remove the clothes. And remove my clothes. <laughs> Let's not do that. Yeah, you see, <laughs> but you see, I won't have substance. Yeah. yeah. True. And then after Big Brother, and then what? Okay. Yeah. Let's, before you go, I, I'm told that the question is for you. And for who? No, let me say one thing about... <laughs> <laughs> this is not an opportunity for you to... Uh, the politician. No, 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 no. That's a good story. But they're telling me, yelling into my ear. Move on. on, 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 on. Where? Mudoni yeah. the drama queen is still here. Nameless, professor, nini. Kuna asa wengi? No, I think if you're young, I think be patient. Be ready to pay the price for what you really want to achieve in life. I was a class A dropout. I didn't make a CC last year. But I never gave up. No, just won't be a results. Yeah, the less said about them, the better. <laughs> be kind. <laughs> so please focus. Don't let people destroy or distract you from your focus. But I think what you can learn from your class eight dropout has become the most awarded Kenyan photographer. Yes, because they work for it. But the thing is, you need to love yourself. Because then, while you throw shit at you and bad things, family TV, boy. Okay, okay, okay. It's past midnight. <laughs> 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 it's, it's past midnight. Mm. No, the thing is, yeah. actually, one thing you can learn from Muhammad Ali, who's the best box in the world, was loving yourself. Because when you love yourself, you can love the world. When you love yourself, you give yourself the best, and you can achieve anything. Okay. So love you, do mm. you. Like Larry. Wait, I know the show is, is coming, is ending, but yeah. I love what he's just oh, said about, 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 about self-love. <laughs> well, yeah. It's just it's a it's I know, it, in journalism. I'm saying, I'll give, I'll give him a show. That's right? the show. Oh, no, 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 I mean, <laughs> I know what you're saying about <laughs> self-love. Yes. That is, and that's what I'm saying about this whole thing for discovery. It's self-love. You can't yeah. be shaken after that. For me, I think it really became aware when I had my son. Because this is someone staring at you, looking at you to be the most honest version of you. Mm -hmm. yes. And I didn't feel like I was being, you know. And so there's always someone <laughs> that I have to be accountable to. Yeah. Yeah. And that's him. True story. And so I, t had, I had to learn to love myself, to learn to love me better and love everyone around me better. Me it sounds too. cheesy, but it really helps. Yeah, it's healthy. Me, me, I love myself so much. The things that is, the hate that comes online. Tell me about petrol, it. Yeah. When you love people, you, when you don't love, shake you. When I say I love myself, go, go next on, right go. on Twitter, yeah. I'm bragging. Oh, yeah. Um, it is they can it is. write whatever they want on yes, Twitter. Yes, who cares? Yeah.